Hola, muy buena tarde a todos. Buenas tardes. Estamos aquí otra vez más. Hace un mes que ya no nos vemos casi. Estamos aquí para ofreceros otra sesión de nuestro Barcelona Bluras Cam. Esta, esta versión, esta ocasión online. ¿Vale? O sea que no me enrollaré mucho más. Le entre, haremos que entre ya algunos de los organizadores. Luis, Jorge, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes. Hola, buenas tardes. Hola a todos. Buenas Hello. tardes. Hey, Jorge, or, or good morning, depending on where you are. Maybe yeah. some, some people are watching from abroad, maybe. No lo sé. Buenas tardes, buenos días, lo que sea. Buenas tardes. Exactly. <laughs> Mucho no. banjo veo aquí, ¿eh? Mucho sí, banjo. estamos todos con el banjo preparado. Maravilloso. Sí, sí. Este no es de Clawhammer, pero anyway. So, no. uh, bueno, le, me... le hemos quitado la parte ah. de atrás. No, 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 no yo. Bueno, con casetín. Let me introduce for the English people and the people in the States and people in Europe this wonderful peep man. It's called Michael G. Miles. He's a great guy. I have to explain, I met him first time in Ireland and I know him because he's uh, amazing. Uh, and uh, it's, it's great to, to mention that he has several CDs, several, several specialists on playing Bach music. And we are really happy uh, here in Alras about doing this workshop. He's going to work on a uh, tune. But the first, let me introduce also before Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Uh, you are hey, here. nice to see you. All right. Hi, Michael. Let me introduce Jan Marie because Jan Marie is going to ask a question. Hi. But let me say, please, uh, to the people who are watching the workshop, remember, remember, this is a free workshop, but we are really happy to receive donations for keep, keep going this workshop, this activity that every month is a, a, a workshop that we like to uh, invite some people and some friends. So, recordeu, recordad que si queréis podéis hacer una donación. Donations can be one euro, two euros, three euros, five euros, two, up to or you. Or two million. Or two million. <laughs> oh, exactly. Or one dollar. <laughs> even, yeah, it can be dollars, it can be yens, it can be any, yeah. any, any currency. Anything. Anything. <laughs> any coin. Any coin. Money yeah. is always good. So, any, <laughs> you know, uh, by PayPal, by Bizum, we are going to be on the chat. Feel free to ask questions to Michael. It's going to be a one-hour workshop. So we are really happy. And then let me introduce uh, Jean-Marie is going to ask. Bonjour, mon ami. Hey, bonjour, les amis. Bonjour. Oh, oh bonjour. Hey, Michael, I, I'm really happy to, to meet you here for the Likewise. first time. <laughs> I hope we will have some more opportunity in the future. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm not... Uh, I'm not uh, 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 claw hammer banjo player really but I, I play what we used to call frilling since a long time mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I play these things like this okay yeah, yeah. But there is one point I never succeed to do it I never understood is the drop firm Uh -huh. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, I, I have tried many things on on YouTube, on and uh, I, ne I never su succeed. So this is my question: If you have any tip, any book, any uh, exercises, uh, I am really interested. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and I'm yeah. sure many of, of us will be interested too. All right, all right. Well, uh, yeah. I'll absolutely, I'll, I'll weave that in to because it's a it's a big part of. Uh, Being able to play any kind of melody line, your thumb needs to move around and get onto those yeah. other other strings. And um, mm -hmm. and and I'll uh, I'll, sh I'll I'll show it to you. But in just in a brief little answer to the question, there's a certain uh, th th it's a, when you listen to clawhammer or banjo players and clawhammer, the word clawhammer and frailing are. Um, Synonym, so so that yeah. uh, I'll use them interchangeably. They don't, they don't mean any different, really. And, and um and so one of the things, the, although all kinds of players have d a totally different sound, there's only w the one thing that all claw hammer players do that is the same is with regard to the right hand attack that your thumb is always on the string before you play it. So when you play, Jean-Marie, uh, when you play like the first and the fifth string, 
It just sounds like that, and it looks like that. I'm getting my banjo up a little higher here so you can see it, right? And so, and that motion of then your thumb, unlike when you finger pick in bluegrass style, your thumb is on the string already, and then it releases it. So, so it, it's set up. It's like if we're going one and two and three and four and, uh, your thumb is set up on the beat, uh, and it plays on the and of the beat. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That much? Okay. okay. So, so then, uh, so there's this motion, and, and I and I would say, uh, and also I um, I use this pick. People might be curious about this pick. It's oh. called a, it's called a Fred <laughs> Kelly pick. I, oh, I yeah. just I just I just put it on when I play, and I take it off when I'm done. Uh, <laughs> if, if you uh, you know. Uh, uh, some people get fake nails and and uh, and go to uh, get their hands manicured and stuff. I I don't do that. I just use these picks and they're and they're and and uh, it works fine for me. So so what happens is there's a simultaneous touch when you play the first string and the fifth string, like what you're doing, Jumri, is it's like this. Your fingers they come down. They come down together. That your yes, thumb, yes. Your thumb and your finger hit. Yeah. At the very same time, okay. Mm -hmm, so yeah. now, when uh, so uh, that's so there's that as your you can you can uh, to like raise your thumb consciousness when your thumb hits the when you hear the sound of the first string you should feel your thumb landing on the fifth string, mm -hmm. right? With me, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, now, yeah. now, now take and uh, move your thumb instead of on the fifth string try it where you play the first string and second string but it's the very same very same notion your your finger plays the first string and your thumb lands on the second string don't play the second string just land on it you know just try that yeah and i and i think i think uh, uh, yeah so 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 your thumb lands there and then it's a release so an exercise that uh, that I like to do is uh, this one where, and I think I saw Ken Perlman do this one time, uh, where you try one in five like that. You just play one in five, and you feel okay, that okay, simultaneous okay. simultaneous touch. And now try one in two. And I'm in total tuning because that's the tuning we're in uh, for Walk and Boss. So. Uh, so this is my open strings, uh, the first string and the second string. And so that, uh, and the difference between, the, and your thumb should feel basically the same way that it feels when you're playing the fifth string. Does okay. that make sense? So it takes, yeah, a little, yeah, it yeah. takes a little, it takes a little, it takes a little doing. And then, uh, so you, so you do one and two for a while and then do... And then try one and three. And then try one and four. And then you're back to and then you're back to one and five and the and the and the and the that the simultaneity of your thumb gets your thumb uh, uh, totally different from from when you finger pick the banjo cuz I play finger style guitar with picks, you know, and I uh, and it's there's no relationship whatsoever uh, to the thumb attack from finger picking and playing blue, and playing bluegrass style and claw hammer. It's because your thumb is always set up on uh, before it plays. There is and and that is what makes um, that's what makes uh, that's what makes melody lines possible because. The attack time, the time it takes to get your thumb uh, from being in out in midair to being on string to play, is eliminated altogether because it never it's never waiting for its turn to play. It's always anticipating, and it's on the string before it plays it, and then the the motion to play it is just a release. So, so, so an, another another exercise just to put it into a context uh, that I and I'll and and I'll get onto the tune in a minute. But just to so I'd suggest that that exor exercise of play one and five, play one and two. Then try this where you're going to play one two one five. So one two one 
two, one, five, one, two, one. And make sure you feel that uh, and go as slow as you have to go to have the simultaneous touch so that those, your thumb and your finger, if I can show this a little better, that they they come down. You don't see my okay. finger because it's back there. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you see my thumb, my thumb lands there. And it does this very same thing on the, whether it's on the, on the first or the fifth string. And then, and then like a simple accompaniment, because what would be good is to just like, a, you know, rent a movie that you like <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and take out your banjo and, and play <laughs> through the whole movie uh, and play, just play some folk songs where you can just play simple chords. And, and, and so uh, here's a, like a simple, uh, if I were going to play um, in G modal, I'm going to, I'll do... Uh, uh, um, and I'm playing third string, brush thumb, which you already were doing, and then one, two, one, five. And uh, Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I say, Shady Grove, my love, I'm bound. To go away, and you hear that third string brush thumb one two one five third string brush thumb, and, and you do that for a while, and, and you know your other musical instincts will take care of the rest. <laughs> uh, uh, but but that but that that's it. It's a simultaneous touch. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Alrighty. Thanks. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Well, already we started, but let me introduce one of the guys of the association. First, uh, we have to say thank, thanks to Jean Manel. He's a master with, the, <laughs> with all the computer and internet uh, stuff. He's amazing. But also, let me introduce Jorge. He's a guitar player, a banjo player, a <laughs> guitar. Uh, he makes guitar, and he's going to introduce this fabulous workshop from with uh, Michael. So, Jorge, go ahead. Hi, 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 everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, with all of you, with Michael, Jean-Marie, Sharon, uh, Luis, and John manel I wish we can all meet uh, all together live, yeah. uh, personally, like we used to do on, in the old times. In the we will. Times. I, I wish we, we can go back to that. Yeah, so I like just to I just would like to say a couple of things about this, this great musician we have here today, Michael Miles. Uh, we had this 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 great musician with us in a few years ago. I'm not exactly sure what year it was. Uh, here in our our RAS Bluegrass Festival, and it was great. I remember that show, and I still get. I don't know how you say. Feel, feel, yeah, <laughs> when I remember it, when I remember your version <laughs> of the boxer, Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, I, yeah. I, I that yeah. was. So fantastic. Okay, Michael Miles is number one in the world right now of what they call progressive clawhammer claw banjo. Clawhammer is this this traditional technique that he was already describing. Yeah, uh, but Michael Miles ha has taken has taken it uh, a, a, not a step further, but a lot further. He <laughs> plays anything on the on the banjo on clawhammer banjo from. Um, Bob Dylan to Johann Sebastian Bach, and I can tell you, it's amazing to see him play Bach on Clawhammer banjo. I don't think anybody in the world does it apart from him. So, and well, I can remember that we were so so happy to have him here a few years ago. Today, he's going to focus on uh, give us a, a workshop on focusing on a song by Doc Watson. Uh, sorry, what was the name of the song? Walking Boss. Oh yeah, Walking Boss. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Michael Miles, for for doing this with us. So, let's go. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, um, I am. Hablo uh, español solamente un poco y muy despacio. I have a few things to say. Estoy honrado y agradecido de estar con ustedes hoy. Y uh, uh, es uh, muy importante entender 
que tocar el banjo hace del mundo un lugar, lugar mejor. Yes? Sí? No? I can hear you yesing. And uh, uh, basta mirar a Luis Gómez y toda la alegría que transmite. El Festival Al Ras es el mejor. So, I am so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here and and uh, uh, and to share the the, the banjo. Uh, I, we were talking before um, th um, we started here that the very first time I heard uh, frailing banjo was in southern France in 1975, and uh, I never found. It was a French banjo player who who joined. I was on a street theater from England uh, that was on tour there, and I never I never found out who this person was. I lo I didn't get his name, but uh, I would love to find him some point. He he played. He joined us. He joined the theater for a day, and uh, and we were playing at night, and he would he would. He would play this frailing style, which I had never ever heard before, because I I'm in Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. I live in Chicago, and and a lot of the banjo, you know, stuff was uh, you know in in the southern part of the United States, and there wasn't that much um, uh, that I was aware of, uh, and, and that I found in Chicago, and and so um, there is, there is a lot now. There's the Old Town School of Folk Music and other places, but. But n nonetheless, it was in southern France that I had my first experience, and I remember watching um, this guy play. And uh, what was unusual to me was when he played. Uh, all the all the notes, uh, you know, what his right hand was doing was kind of hidden, and it and it sounded it sounded luxurious to me, but I I I did not know what it was, and so. He said, uh, I said, what? because he would finger pick, he could play all this great bluegrass stuff as well. And when he went to play, um, when he went to, when we changed songs, he started frailing. And so, uh, and I, but I'd never heard that. And I said, what are you doing? And he said to me, uh, eat is frailing. And I thought, I have to remember that word. So uh, today, uh, what we're going to do, uh, is we're going to learn this walking boss song, but I'm also going to start with some basic uh, fundamental frailing uh, techniques so that you can get uh, get grounded, as well as show you the guitar part for walking boss so that so that uh, you can if you have guitar player friends or you want to play it on the guitar you can too. So, but let me just uh, enough talk for now. Let me. Uh, I'll just I'll play the song and uh, sing it for you, and you've got the music there if you want to just play along uh it follows follow those chords we're, we're gonna tear through it but i just want time to time to play something and talk a little less so here we go uh <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, walking boats, walking boats, walking boats. You're the boats, but I don't belong to you. I belong, I belong. I can get along with that steel driving crew. Ah, all right. So there's um there's our song, and um, let me go to uh, the right hand uh, just a little bit on the right hand technique because people I, at some of those banjo camps and festivals and stuff I've taught this class called Instant Claw Hammer uh, for bluegrass players because there tend to be more bluegrass players, and so let me just show you how to what what I like to describe as a basic basic frailing motion and again frailing claw hammer they mean the same thing so um uh one of the things that uh and you can kind of see this i put this i use my middle finger some people use their index finger to play the string but the only thing that actually makes a sound in in this style is that middle finger and my thumb those are the only that ever hit the string and the middle finger is a, it's a downward attack so so if i were to just do this and i'd like to start out by uh you know have your hand be like picture that you're you're uh holding a bottle of beer or something and it's not there and you've got that kind of rounded shape and it's called you know it's called claw but it's not it's not like it's not a tense fist or anything it's my hands loose but that middle finger is at the lead of my whole hand and it's just gonna and I'm and I'm and it's not on its own sometimes you'll see people doing this sort of thing uh, and it's but it's better I uh, and everything is I'll so anything that I say it's anarchy you know with with uh, the banjo and the guitar. So uh, anything that I say, it's just my recommendation. It's not the rules because there are people who do other things, but I'm happy to share. I've got a number of books and odds and ends of and I've been teaching this for a long time. So these are the things that I've found that, the, uh, that are successful ways of getting people to play. And I've had lots of people learn this. So, so that's my disclaimer for this is not correct necessarily. This is just the way that I do it and it's been effective. Uh, so so anyway that the hand it, it, it's it's a ra kind of a rounded shape and i just like to you know you can start out by just strumming down and some people are much more comfortable with their index finger than their middle finger it's and neither one is more correct you know um so either one you want to use it helps if you have a fingernail and then if you don't have a fingernail you can take you might have a finger pick like a guitar or banjo finger pick you can put that on backwards they tend to they tend to fall off though um and this is this brand it's called fred kelly like an irish guy fred f-r-e-d kelly k-e-l-i claw hammer picks um I, elderly instrument sells them other places uh sell them on and you can find them on amazon now i think even so uh <laughs> a lot of a lot of money being made from people selling i think they're five bucks each but uh you know you get two or three and then you can lose one and you'll fit the other anyway so 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 then this motion i'm going to strum i'm going to strum down like so and i keep the shape of my hand not let that not let that hand go flying like a like uh like the like a flamenco move rather you just kind of hold that and that's a way to start and then try hit single string and then just hit so hit the first string and then try the second string and again it's just downward motion and notice that the uh, when I when I go to play when I'm playing along here you see this you see this kind of bounce to my wrist so there is and it's so it's not a, it's not a finger motion rather but it's a hand motion and the hand motion gives me more um, it gives me more power it gives me more uh, more control now, and I can be loud if I want to be loud but if I want to take it to a whisper Uh, without losing the tone that's 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 part of so i i it, it um helps me control the dynamic range okay so that um so th that's that's the reason to have it be your whole hand um okay and so so then try playing uh we try a few strums then try a few single strings the first string 
and then the second string, and then the third string, and then the fourth string, and uh, and then uh, and then strum them all again. And and the only thing that is actually touching the banjo is is my forearm. You know, so so the reason that and how I find where I want to play has to do with kind of what I just played. The, unlike unlike a bluegrass player has got a, usually they plant one or two fingers down while they finger pick. We're not planting anything. The only thing that's touching the banjo is over here. My, my forearm is sitting on the banjo and otherwise my hand is up here in the wind and it's moving around and so the so the my sense of where I am and how to hit which string I want to hit uh, uh, is is kind of an intuitive thing. You just get get a sense of like walking around in the dark a little bit. You get a sense of where things are if you, if you kept your eyes closed uh, 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 or had to play like Doc Watts, who does everything by 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 a sense of touch and a sense of sound without actually getting to see any of it. It's incredible. So. Um, uh, so then you've got that single string part. Then we bring in your thumb. And, and it's usually, uh, so then, and here's how to bring the thumb in. And this is the most critical thing. And this is what uh, John Marie was asking about, was like, how do you get with the, the double thumbing where your thumb comes off the fifth string and plays others? Well, I like to start by doing this. And try this with me if you've never played claw hammer. And if you have, just bear with me a little bit so we get... Uh, get everybody on the bus here. So um, so I'm gonna strum across the strings and I'll let my thumb land on the fifth string, just like that. Just gonna land there, not play anything. I just wanna, the, the, the strum sets up my thumb. And then, and then my thumb, it's on the string, then it releases. And you get that sound. And uh, so I'm just, and as I brush across, so as I brush across the string, the brush sets up the thumb, and then the thumb releases. And I don't, uh, I kind of like to say, it, I, um, it doesn't release in a downward fashion. So I'm not taking my thumb and going that way, but rather, it's, it's, it's already on the string, so it's just gonna let go and almost upward. So see how my, as I play that fifth string, my thumb releases and comes up. And there's a, and that's that's the beginning of it. That's the, uh, you know, you've may have heard of uh, Pete Seeger's Bump Diddy. That's the Diddy part of Bump Diddy. Bump would be uh, to play uh, to play just a strum by itself. a single string as a quarter note and uh, and that's a, and this is where um, uh, the the hard thing at the front end is getting the timing of your thumb that your thumb is on the string forehand so if you've never played frailing stuff before and you'd like to the best thing to do is to just take like uh, you know what's that uh, you could t just take a sim a, the simplest song you can of uh, that you like that you can just play and keep an eye on your on your right hand and just watch and you get that to get uh, to get the habit of your thumb being on the fifth string before you play when once you do then uh, you're set and there there, there are those songs uh, uh, I like. Uh, I'm gonna put myself in G tuning for a moment. Uh, a froggy went a court nine, he did right on. Uh -huh. Now I'm just playing third string, brush them. That's a bump ditty. Third string, brush them. And John Marie, you could play. That's the, that would be the double picking version, but the simpler version is uh, this one. A froggy went a cold night, he did right on. And you can just do that 
uh, all the way all the way through the song. You don't even have to change any chords. You can just play it as a one chord song. It's kind of charming that way. And uh, just to get just to get that um, uh, grounded. And then uh, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff on the online of, of free uh, free. Uh, stuff about how you know people show you how they how they do it and how they uh, sing but the one how they play the banjo how they frail it and there's lots of claw hammer stuff I've got a book called teach yourself to play claw hammer banjo that I wrote back in 1984 um, that's still out there uh, and uh, and it's I've helped a lot of people get started with it but it's just a, it's simple it's folk music but the one thing literally the one thing that all frailing claw hammer players do is that your thumb is on the string beforehand so once you've got that uh and as i was saying about the the double thumbing business uh uh was uh an, an exercise you can do and i'll just repeat it here so we have it so um uh here's the playing one in five I'm just, you know, and and the and the important thing is my thumb is on the fifth string before I play it, and then I release it. So you can see um, see them. There we go. That's a better camera angle. They they literally come down. They hit at the same time. And then when I go first uh, to take it over to the other strings, now I'm going to play one and two, and look at the same thing. Now I'm I'm in G tuning. But uh, so, so let me go back to G modal. So uh, and we'll get on to walking boss. So here's that uh, one and two in G modal. So I'm playing uh, the first string and the second string. They're coming down. My thumb lands. See that lands at the same time as my finger hits the first string. And now I'll go to one and three. And then one and four. And then one and five. And uh, so that's uh, that just um, that's just to get us. Uh, the one thing that that I've and it's a it, it is a um, when because here's what can happen, and here's what happens to many people. This do, sounds the same as this, where my thumb's coming in, and I can, key, I can play those same notes, but here's my thumb coming in um, all by itself, not, and it's not set up on the beat. It's coming in to play just like you would if you were finger picking bluegrass style or, or on the guitar or something. Uh, but what that does is it uh, where you where you lose your um, advantage is that it you, that attack time is put built right in there and so here your thumb is set up on the beat and and what happens is I work with um, students I'll see them um, if their thumbs coming in late and they're and they're distracted by all the all the cool things that you know, might be um, might be coming their way. Uh, I, I say, don't worry about anything. Don't look at any tablature. Don't look at your left hand. Just look at your right hand. Play something that you know, and keep an eye on your thumb so that you get your thumb in there ahead of time. And if you do that, then the sky is the limit. You know, claw hammer banjo. It's the greatest thing you get. You can get all these cool grooves uh, because you know you can strum. You can get all this percussive stuff. You can do, you know, I like to play blues. I play the fretless banjo. I do all these other things. And uh, and uh, like the, the the boxer doesn't sound like a tune that should be played on the banjo. Uh, and I don't know that anyone that anyone ever did besides besides me. But uh, but the uh, uh, but it, there are these cool rhythms that you can uh, that you can get once once you get once you get this right hand thing done it's all front loaded and if you uh, and my experience too was it took me it literally took me a year from 1975 when i was first in france seeing this to figure it out and then i started showing people and i discovered that uh 
I discovered that, well, I'd take um, eight weeks of lessons to get somebody to do it. And then I thought, eh, it looks like I can do it in four weeks. Eh. And then, and then uh, sure enough, um, over time, I discovered that some people get it right away. It, and I could, I could show some people, and they just get it in 10 minutes. And it's like, it's not fair. It took me a year to figure this out. But now you can do it after 10 minutes. And, and the reason that is, is uh, that it's, it's a quite a natural motion. Um, and, uh, and you can, um, uh, uh, that's been played on ancient string instruments across the world for a long, long, long time. It's not, has, has not, this attack, this way of playing strings is not uh, uh, exclusively an American thing whatsoever. I've, pl I've met plenty of players in North Africa and the Middle East who are playing other instruments that are not banjos that they use this attack and that, that downward attack. It's like it's, it's ancient as string instruments on planet Earth itself. So, um, okay, enough about that. Uh, I'm going to go to Walking Boss. So um, there are... Uh, uh, and and you've got the tablature uh, there. There's a little um, there's and we're going to play the melody in in two octaves. So we can play the melody down low, and then we can play it up high. So, um, uh, but it starts with uh, and this this I had the good fortune of uh, I got to open for Doc Watson a couple of times and got to chat with him and we had dinner one night and and uh and i first heard this song played by mike seeger who was talking about clarence ashley who told him that he had learned it from these black uh, railroad workers who sang this song uh and and I, what i like about it is like walking boss man you know every you everybody listening probably had some boss that you did not like and they were just like you know it's those those you know jobs you get i remember i had a i was a bartender and the and the bar managers were these big jerks you know and and i and i had a deal with them and it was like uh, uh i belong i belong to the i belong to the workers i don't belong to you and uh, and i and i like how that uh, it runs through this song this this uh, the 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 way that um the way that Doc sings it, the way that Mike Seeger sang it, talking about how Clarence Ashley uh, learned it and stuff. So there's always this little intro, and it's very the very first measure of the tablature. It's just six notes or seven notes, just like that. And I'm gonna play. So uh, uh, and it starts on the second beat of the measure, but you get the uh, so the third third fret of the first string open fifth string then and then one and two and then little hammer on uh, so I'm gonna play those first two measures just just a, a loop them a little bit so you can uh, and you can get a sense of how to, how to get that introduction so I'll, I'll count in I'm going to count you in, and I'll go one, two, three, four, one. And there's that, there's that, uh, it's kind of a signature. A signature um, for, uh, for the, for the tune. Then, um, we're, uh, then we get up to the melody, where you can see the words underneath the melody, there, uh, where it says walk and boss. And I'm going to do that. You pull off from the third fret there. It, this is the third measure on this first line. Um, and, uh, and then uh, there's, and it's just a simple way to deliver that. And that's a walking boss. Um, but um, uh, and and that chord that we're playing um, is a G minor chord. That second fret, and you can see it on the little diagram there. Second fret on the second string is G minor. And what's what's kind of what's kind of cool uh, uh, and friendly about this song is that there's only two chords: G minor 
uh, when we're in this tuning, an F. And um, can you, uh, uh, John, p uh, put up uh, just the chord summary, the page two um, uh, for that? And if we look at page two, you can see, and you, uh, if you have a copy of this, there's the chord progression of the whole song. So one thing you can do is to um, is to just grab these chords, G minor, which is the second fret on the second string, and then F, which looks like F in regular G tuning, except you leave the second string open. So I have uh, I have my um, you see he's going to bring that little diagram, which is there we go, uh, the uh, third fret on the fourth string, the second fret on the third string, and the third fret on the first string. That's F. So G minor and F. Uh, and let's just just try this with me, two measures of each, just to, just to start. So I'm going to play, I'll count you in. We'll play two measures of G minor, then we'll play two measures of F, and just repeat it, just so you can get the sense of, uh, of those chords. Here it comes. One, two, three. Four. Here's G minor, another G minor, now play F, now go back to G minor, very simple, I'm just playing uh, that kind of bump ditty rhythm, third string, brush thumb, third string, brush thumb, and then F. I'm playing the bass note on the fourth string. For G minor, I'm playing the G, open third string, and then a brush thumb. And then F. Right. And sometimes with F, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can leave, I'm using my little finger on the first string, but sometimes I leave that first string open. Uh, and that that chord, if your first string is open, and you play that, it's one of my favorite banjo chords of all time. It's an F six nine chord. Uh, so uh, you can, as the song goes on, you get a lot of time to play F. You can experiment with with uh, <laughs> um, whether you uh, first string or not. The good news is, though, so for like song accompaniment part, you go from a one, a one finger chord. G minor to uh, if you played F six and nine and leave the first string open, it's just a two finger chord. So it's really simple. So can uh, Juan, can we see the uh, the chord progression for the song again? The page two of the tablature, because now um, I just want to uh, play the chords to the song and sing the song, and then we'll so join with me on this. And um, uh, one quick thing. If you, uh, just so it's on this tape, uh, here's my guitar. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play, I wanted to, the easiest way for a guitar player to play it with you, because you're in G minor, would be if they were to play, put a capo on the third fret. See, I've got a capo on my third fret here. It's not a very big capo, so you don't see it. But then I'll play E minor, E minor. And uh, E minor and D. So watch this. Here's E minor. Walk in bows. Walk in bows. D for four measures. Walk in for six measures. But I don't belong to you. I belong. I belong. And I can get along with that steel driving crew. Okay, so that's what the guitar players uh, can do to play along. Because the coolest thing, you know, is uh, if you can, you know, play uh, play these songs with your friends. So now, back to the banjo. We're gonna play G minor. Two measures of G minor, and then it's uh, six measures of F, and then you, you can s see that. Let me put the whole, yeah, so we can see the whole thing. There we go. So here we go from the very top. I'll count you in, and I'll I'll uh, and I'll sing this as we go. So and now just be ready when it's when it's F. You get over to that. And one of the things that 
that I'll do, uh, I keep my middle finger is playing the G minor. And so then when I go to F, I, I'm going to get my middle finger and my ring finger to play. Uh, so, th so you've got this kind of, you're already halfway there. So here we go. Uh, now here comes uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, walking boss. Walking boss, here's F. You're the boss. But I don't belong to the G minor. I belong. I belong. And I can get along with that steel driving crew. So there's a progression. Now I'll count it so you can stay with me if you if you got lost there where the changes were. So here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, G minor. G minor. Now F. Another F. 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 G minor. Back to F. I would always say to uh, uh, to um, uh, <laughs> the good thing about two chord song is if you're playing a two chord song and you're on the wrong chord, you uh, you know you have two choices. One is you can uh, stay there and wait until uh, everybody comes back to you, or you can just go to the other chord because there's only one choice. So, uh, so, so, uh, what I like to th think about for, like, trying to create this into a song is having that, having that fundamental, you know, drive to the rhythm. And this, and as we, as I take it out of context and just play the chords, I want to know the chords. I want to know the chords. I want to sing it. And if you're not a singer, it's helpful to hum it. Uh, you know, uh, just to get, because uh, by using your voice, it's going to help when you want to take that melody and put it on the banjo. You know, your voice becomes like a conduit to being a better melody player. So, um, and yeah, and um, and we're in G modal tuning. So I can see that uh, Joan just uh, um, circled the tuning. So the second string is tuned up to C. Um, all right. Uh, okay. So back to the now. Now, um, with with that in mind, um, you've got you got a sense of the chords, a sense of the tune. You know, by, you can sing it. And the upside too is uh, Doc Watson um, and Clarence Ashley. Uh, you can find them on YouTube, and they uh, are both singing it and playing it in in this key in G minor so so uh so you can play along with them and that'll be uh that's a, a fun a fun way to step into it so um okay so the melody starts there uh um and that's just that beginning melody so walking balls walking balls can we just try that much? Uh, so, um, uh, and the way I'll do that is uh, I'm gonna count one and two and, and just do that much. You try that, you pull off, and then strum a few G minor chords. So here it comes. And it starts on three, so I'll go one and two and ba -da -da -bum. that's where you start. Here it comes. One and two and do it again. Three, four, one, two. And there's a and you just kind of get that uh, get that in your in your bones. There's the you know the opening part and then the second part of that melody. Uh, it also starts on this on the you're the boss the you're the boss so the the count is going to be the same. I'll go one and two and and the 
So try that with me. Here comes one and two and or no one two three four one two. Do it again. And you're the boss. You're the boss. You're the boss. And then uh, now we put those two together and we get. Uh, So let's try that, and I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'm going to count in one, two, three, four, one, two, and you start right on walking balls. You're the boss, and we'll loop that, loop that line. If you t here it comes, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. Do it again. Walking ball, three, three, four, one, two. You're the ball. Four, do it again. Walking ball, two, three, four, one, two. You're the balls. Walking ball. You're the balls. Oh, okay, then, uh, then it's um, the. Now it's uh, same the same rhythm, but I, but I don't belong to you. Uh, and here's where um, <clears throat> this is in measure uh, measure nine and ten. Uh, I'm going to play the open third string, second fret of the third string, and then slide up to ten. Uh, I'm sorry, slide up to the fifth fret rather. And you could play the second string. It's the same same pitch, but there's a sense of um, oftentimes what's great about the, the banjo in these close tunings, you get a little more, I get a little more color out of that you know, by keeping it as a fretted note. And then I can also slide up to it if I want. So the note, it could sound like the open second string. It could sound like the, uh, the third string fifth fret, or you could give it a little, Arrival sound, uh, so that that's what I like. So try that with me. But I don't, I don't. Um, and then uh, there's the uh, there's the the end of it. Uh, so I have. But I don't belong to you. Try that with me. So I'll give you one, two, three, four, one, two. And we're going to play, but I don't belong to you. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. I don't belong to you. Try it again. And one, two. But I don't belong to you. One more time. One, two. But I don't belong to you. Um, and then it starts to repeat. Uh, I belong, I belong, I get along with that steel driving crew. Uh, and oftentimes uh, that um, when he when he gets to the uh, e end of the, you'll hear that they, they, Doc Watson, Clarence Ashley, and Mike Seeger, they use, they use that little signature lick at the very beginning, the very first measure that we played. They all use it a little differently, um, but it's always, it's always in there. Um, somewhere. So then we're going to play the thing uh, up an octave, but let's see if we can just uh, uh, get this much. Cause I, so I want to take it from Walking Boss right there in the third measure of the beginning. I'll count in the same way. One, two, three, four, one, two. We're going to play Walking Boss. Uh, you're the boss. Uh, yeah, you're the boss, but I don't belong to you. That's the, if you get that much, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the stuff of this song and that with that when you have it when you're comfortable with it in the lower octave <clears throat> taking it to the higher octave is uh, is going to be really easy um, or much easier i should say so try this with me We're, i'll give you the same count one two three four one two and we start with walk and boss we pull off from the third fret uh there in the first line here it comes one two three Four, one, two. You're the boss. You're the boss. One, 
to, but I don't belong to you. Do it again. One, two, walk and boss. You're the boss. You're the boss. But I don't belong to you. Um, then, uh, how about how about this? Does anybody have any? Are there any questions are you, uh, uh, coming up that I'm not see? I don't I see the chat at all anyway. So, um, any questions anybody has so far? Or are we we uh, right? I don't see any questions. I'll just keep plugging away here because um, I don't I don't have a chat on my screen. There, there, we go. there, there are no one. questions, Michael. Okay. Okay. <laughs> crystal, crystal clear, like all good banjo talk. Yeah. Uh, um, all right. So then uh, we've got we, that. That's that's that. I went, now I want to show you how to play the very same thing up an octave because it's way fun to do. And one of the things that it's not very common in claw hammer banjo playing that um, people uh, take a song like this one. Um, and uh, play the melody in a lower octave, and then play it up an octave. And it, but it adds this emotional punch because listen to this: if you're going, if you're down here, and then to do this, It's a, it just it's adds an ex, a level of excitement to jump the octave and sometimes it can work you can start in the higher octave and jump down to the lower one but anyway now doing what just what we did in the lower octave we'll jump up to the higher octave so this starts uh, in measure 24 the second ending um, um, and and now instead of doing a pull off we're gonna do this so I'm gonna put my finger uh, at the eighth fret on the first string and you can see that so I'm just playing the eighth fret on the first string and then the open fifth string and then the that eighth fret again so that's walking uh, and boss is seventh fret on the second string and then so try that with me and I'm gonna count it in the same way one two three four one two and you play Okay, so here it comes. One, two, three, four, one, two. And we do it again. One, two. Do it again. Two, three, four, one, two. And there's the, so there's walking boss. And now the, the, uh, you're the boss. It is down here to our uh, F chord. So I'm just going to play, and, the, and the you're the boss. There it is at the end of its measure 26, measure 28. Rather, the last two notes of that, um, of that one, two, three, four, sixth line of music. Uh, um, to play the open first string, uh, and then the second fret, and then... And, and, you know, some people, uh, I don't know how you all feel about tablature. Some people don't, uh, um, uh, some people don't like tablature. I, and, and they do everything by ear, and in a perfect circumstance, I would, you know, we could, if we were sitting on, uh, you know, somebody's front porch together, I could say, play this and play that. Uh, and I like to share more detail so uh, than is reasonable to ask you to memorize. So. So even if you don't read tablature, you can kind of have this as uh, you know with the recording, uh, which matches the tablature, and the tablature itself. It can be a roadmap to the notes. And so some people say, well, I don't read music or I don't read tablature, and you don't necessarily uh, have to quote unquote read it to use it, you know, uh, because it's like where where are those you know where are those notes and this can help and i that's the reason i put in the words too because you can know where the words the uh what the words are associated with uh with the melody so um 
so there, um, there's the there's the beginning the uh, the that we just played. Now we're gonna do "You're the Boss." Measure uh, the next part, and I'll do the same way, but this time we're gonna go open uh, the open first string, the second fret of the first string, and then the F chord. So I'll just count it in like one, two, three, four, one, two. And, and try that with me. One, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. Do it again. One, two. Two. Uh, so now uh, we have, uh, and I know we're running out of time, but there's just a couple other quick things I want to show you that you'll be happy about once you have them. So, but let's get this much. So. So try with me. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, one, two, and play this walking boss up there at the eighth and seventh frets, and then we go down to the to the F chord at the second and third fret. So here it comes. Ready? One, two, three, four, one, two. Now go down to the. Do it again. One. Two. And down to the F. Repeat it. One. Okay. And then here's the now here's the thing that makes that that that's my favorite part about this whole arrangement is uh but I don't belong to you. Where, and here's what you're going to do. And I wrote in tiny little numbers above the tablature. Uh, so you can see this is the very last line, the second measure. It's 7 and 9 on the first string, and then 10, uh, uh, 7 and 9 on the second string, and then 10 on the first string. And then you're going to play this little chord up, up there. Uh, and above the 7 and 9, you can see a tiny little number 1. And that is... Um, uh, left hand finger so i want you to use your index finger to play seven and then play nine as well so you're going to go seven nine and then you leave that finger down and then you play this chord that looks like a d7 on a on a guitar or just a little triangle that's the f so uh and you get that sound of but i don't and it's all set up by, because it's all scary jumping up the neck if you haven't ever done so. But yeah, here's like, this is what's going to make it easier, is that your index, you just put your index finger at seven. You got a dot there. And then you slide that index finger to nine and hold on. And with that holding on, then you add your other two, other two fingers. So let's just try that, right? So put your index finger at the seventh fret. And I'm going to count in the same way. One, two, three, four, one, two. And you're going to play... Like that. Okay, here it comes. One, two, three, four, one, two. And there's that uh, uh, that double thumbing pattern of uh, that's an F chord up high. Uh, um, and you're gonna uh, play uh, that in in the th in the third. Once you're on that chord, you play the the first string brush them and then one two one five which summary that was that was what we were talking about that's very same pattern uh, and then comes this other fun part you're gonna go you can do pull-offs from the 12th fret and then uh, you can then at the uh, eighth fret you can you can hammer on to 10 or if you look in the very last line on page two, uh, I play that as a. Um, you can you you can play the eighth fret all by itself, or you could do another pull off, you know. And it's a uh, um, in contrast to the to the um, the simplicity of this part when we were doing walking balls and I'm just strumming. 
walking balls and nothing much is happening i, I like to i like to look for wh where can i put in some sort of banjo ism of sorts you know something that makes it feel like it's a cool banjo piece and here was one of those spots where uh this is still basic song i'm just kind of abiding by it but now i'm gonna have fun and i'll do that and you can just do three pull-offs from the 12th fret from the 10th fret from the 8th fret and then land there on on seven so or or you can you know you can decide what you want it's it's a i mean i i wouldn't necessarily you know this is not sacred tablature or anything i don't this way every time i play it and uh, and you have uh and you don't and you know if if you if when you play through this if you discover stuff along the way that's that is not the way it's written that is that's that would be fantastic that's the goal you know it's not to it's not to like this is this is not you know i uh i met doc watson i got to hang around with him and uh, uh a little bit and i and he's been a huge influence and role model uh to me about his uh his his beautiful musicianship um but uh, he's also all about uh, discovery, you know, and uh, what uh, and and the process of taking a song like Walking Boss. Uh, here's here's the nuts and bolts. There's this part of the melody. There's not much there. Walking Boss, or and and uh, and what's cool about Claw Hammer is you get that. You can. Uh, and I just like. Sometimes I'll throw that in, just mute the strings and be the drummer. And, and I, or, so, so there's where, there's where all those, uh, <laughs> there's where all those notes lie. And then there's, you know, uh, I didn't talk about, um, the kind of in, be in between stuff in between where those melody parts are, um, because a lot of that is arbitrary. It's, you know, like what you do after when you're playing the melody, walk in balls. Uh, it, all you're doing kind of is waiting for, I'm waiting for the next part of the melody. So in between that, if you can feel the beat, you know, and you have this underpinning of where the, there's that, there's that kind of groove going on, walk in balls. Walking in boss, and so what I play in between is um, those things are uh, on the arbitrary side. You can look and play what's written there, but I like to I like to uh, emphasize that um, uh, that uh, the, it's easier for you to remember and make your own arbitrary decisions than necessarily take anybody else's. So so uh, in in music analysis, they've got the things called uh, primary melody notes and secondary melody notes. So those melody notes that we were playing, those are the primary ones that are on the words. Walk in balls, walk in balls. And if you can get that in your ear, you know, those, and know now, like uh, I, I also teach um, uh, in a few universities and I've taught uh, music, music teachers to, and I'd like to introduce how B.B. King thinks and B.B. Uh, King he doesn't read anything uh, and he doesn't uh, he doesn't play anybody else's music he just knows where the sounds are so you go by where the sounds are here's the sound and here's the sound and with that you're uh, you're uh, you can go to town and what you could do as well is like to play it tonight uh, is uh, you could take a little bit of that I learned walking boss. It goes like this. Walking in boss. So, okay. so with that, I should uh, I should probably stop. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wait, son. The light. To yeah. Sorry. Uh, I perhaps now we can open the just for questions if there is any any comment. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yeah? Ah, yeah, one yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Glad you like the tone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the uh, this is um this um there's lots of different kinds of banjos you can get. I mean, I it's just a uh this is a Neckville banjo. I, I uh, and uh, I like it because because I my I have this one man show and I travel a lot and uh, and uh, it comes off the neck comes off. So I've uh, I've I've got a couple of these. Uh, where I have to travel with multiple instruments, and uh, and so it's unbelievable to me that you can take the neck off, put it back on, and the banjo still sounds like uh, still sounds like it's hey, there's my cousin or my nephew Greg, thank you Greg, and uh, and the uh, uh, the banjo still sounds it sounds okay, it recovers, you know, you took a neck off a guitar, I think the guitar would be in crisis for a long time, but uh, but the, for some reason they uh, the banjo does does okay, and. Uh, has has lovely uh, sound, and I always uh, I always stick a uh, a towel in the back. Uh, usually, it's to mute uh, the banjo, but uh, I like to have it in, in case you invite me over uh, to your house for dinner. I could help you with the dishes there. Yeah. Um, okay, questions. I don't see any questions. Uh, uh, Luis, you have a question? Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm muted. Hi. Hi. I can hear you now. Hi. Yeah, I'm muted. Maybe. No. No, I, I can hear can, you. We can what? hear you. We can hear you. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm right now. I'm I'm not muted. Maybe it's from Jean Manel. Can you put me? No, we can hear you, Luis. Ah, ya okay. te, ya te oímos. Ya te oímos. Oh, Luis. Sorry. Yeah, I can hear so, you, Luis. Yeah. <laughs> sorry for the technical problems and the interruption of your workshop. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. I think you did a great job. And just to mention if uh, anybody have a question, some people is right now is watching the, the workshop. I think, as I mentioned, I think it's, it, it was great. So we are going to finish in five minutes. Just to say thank you very much. And then the final question, if Jorge, uh, Jean-Marie, if you want to say, ah, good, good, good point, uh, remember, <laughs> with a PayPal account, Bizum, with a cell phone, also bank transfer if you want to donate something to keep going these workshops and Alras. We are thinking about the, in November for the Alras Festival. We hope the COVID uh, is going to be, all of us, we are going to be more or less vaccinated. So I think we can do ah. this. Yes, what? I hope. This year, the Alras edition. So, what question? Yeah, so Jamari, Sharon, any question, anything to mention? One question. No, no question, but thank you very much, Michael. It was really nice. It's a nice song, and I will uh, grab the tablature and I will learn because I've seen many things really interesting for me in there. And, thank and, you. And I will check that he works regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Very yeah, nice. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Really. No, no, like, uh, no, 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 well no loafing around. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Very well explained as well. Yes. Well, I would like to ask something that I think that many people might be interested in, which is, do you do lessons online, Michael? Um, I, uh, you know, I have not. Uh, but if, uh, but uh, if, if people are, I've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, these kind of Zoom workshops and stuff. So, uh, but if somebody wants uh, lessons, they can just drop me a email. We can work something out. You know, okay. uh, and uh, I'd uh, I'd be and oh, there's my website. Uh, yeah, you can get to me through yeah, there. And just go to Michael's and, website and contact him or yeah, anything. Yeah, and uh, and uh, who oh, wants to have a, another workshop maybe in a, in another uh, bluegrass festival? Yeah, or something? I do have a I do have a, a at, at you'll see at my website. I've got a number of workshops come. I'm doing a workshop on Monday. Uh, it's at it's at six thirty at night, so that makes it at midnight. So you'd have to stay up late. But um, okay. <laughs> Monday is uh, d is the, is the uh, Dolly Parton's the, Jolene. Uh, so uh, if, if I, I, love that. <laughs> I love that song. Not the problem not the problem Jolene. is not staying staying up no. until twelve. The problem is playing the banjo at twelve with yes. the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, they'll get yeah, it. They'll get it. Well, 
there's not a problem. We take dinner at around 10 or 11. So yeah, yeah. Probably... We're still having dinner. Yes. <laughs> it's it's yeah, not yeah, the yeah, problem yeah. for Spanish people, but yes. for French it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, then, you know, stay up and do it. And, and, and what I would repeat yeah. is muy importante entender que tocar el banjo hace del mundo un lugar mejor. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I I would like to say something to remember something that Pete Seeger said about Michael yeah. Miles because I, I just remembered that I wanted to say that um, before when I introduced you and I forgot and I want I, I I wanted to say that before I go because I think it's it's absolutely true. Pete Seeger, the great Pete Seeger, said when I listened to Mike, Michael Miles, I felt like starting to learn the banjo all over again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the great Pete Seeger, yeah. and I think he's right. I, wa I watch this man, uh, and I hear that that wonderful tone he gets out of his banjo because I I love that tone, and I feel like playing the banjo, and I feel like like trailing. <laughs> yeah. Ah, care careful! It's a really slippery slope. You know, pretty soon you'll start dressing like Louise. And, uh, ah. your, your, <laughs> diet, your diet, your diet, your diet will change. And yeah. <laughs> everything See, you'll start. Sure. You'll start yeah, talking sure. funny, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not wearing the funny socks yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but yes, I like the shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. Well, I have to mention, as you say, Jorge, as Pete Seeger was talking about uh, Michael, that we are really lucky, and, and sometimes we lose the the thing that people like Michael or Jean Marie, they are legends on the ban on the yeah. banjo world. You and know, now, now it, because. It's really easy with the online thing. You can have a, a chat with Michael, a lesson with with Jean Marie or email. But when it was not YouTube on all the information, these people were playing. You know, as Michael says, uh, he's still looking for his holy grail in France. But he discovered yeah. so hammer in France. So yeah. right now, everything is online. But these people, uh, I always say, they are legends, and we have to say thanks. Because you you are great and thank you very thank you very much for being uh, on the workshop. Thank you very much, Jean Marie. And well, I think <clears throat> we don't have anything to mention. If people from the chat has any question, please go and especially please put money on the bank account or <laughs> PayPal. We will. Uh, we will. Or Michael, yeah. please. So, if you want to say final words, Michael, thank you very much. Well. Um... Just it's, it's uh, I'm I'm honored to share it. It's tricky to pack uh, a, a bunch of stuff into into a short uh, span of time. But I uh, I was trying to do those little exercises so that if you can still access the access the uh, this recording, you can play along with that and count the counting in one two three four one two and try those phrases over and over. You get them grounded on those primary melody notes in two octaves, and the and the song will fall forward and, uh, and, uh, and 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 thanks to uh, to all of you at the Al Ross festival it's a, it's a it's a beautiful thing that you've created and sustained and it's an honor to be a part of it and I'm I'm so grateful it it means more uh, to, you know it means a lot to me to sh just share what it is that I care about and uh, and there's no there's no price you put on that. It's like this is what uh, gives uh, you know resonance to our daily lives. So so thank you for this opportunity. Thanks thank to you. you, Michael. Thanks to you, Michael, yeah. for showing us, helping us with our banjo playing and teaching us your your music and your your art. Anytime. Anytime. And uh, I look forward to coming back to Barcelona too. Uh, and what, yeah, what, what a great, great city. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So for uh, thank right. you very much oh, for all good. the people attending the workshop. Goodbye. Stay safe. Play banjo. And as uh, <laughs> Michael said, the banjo is better playing banjo, especially claw hammer. Not finger picks. Not three finger picks. Claw <laughs> hammer. Uh, bye. <laughs> bye. Yeah, right. All right. All right. See ya. Take care. Really? <laughs> yeah.